Deuteronomy chapter 1, Deuteronomy chapter 1, and uh, we're going to look just for a few minutes from this passage, and then we're going to eat, and all God's people said, amen, Amen. praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 1, verse 20, I've just been reading, just going to share something from my devotions, if that's okay. Uh, I've been reading here, and and, it certainly goes along with what I preach in the New Testament. It's neat as you study God's Word, how it all folds together, you know, and uh, there's... Is like, almost like the same author wrote it all, and uh, but God is bringing us together. Not only that, we all are the same. We all have that same human condition, and uh, we all need the same reminders and prodding. And you'll see even from the message this morning how it goes right in this passage as well. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 20 will begin, and this is Moses speaking as he's writing the end of his life. And I said unto you, ye are come into the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Deuteronomy 1.21. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. It's one of the great tools of the devil. Discouragement. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up, and into what cities we shall come. And the saying pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came unto the valley of Eshcol and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said... It is a good land, which the Lord our God doth give us. Of course, right? (laughs) God doesn't give any bad land. It's a good land. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tents and said, be careful what you say in your tent. Careful what you say where you think no one's listening. Because the Lord hated us. No, no, no. If he hated you, he left you as slaves. Listen how foolish we talk. And I say we because we've all been there. Because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart. Be careful who you listen to. Saying, the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. You know, you want to say here, who cares? Who cares they're greater and taller than you? But the truth is, If it was you and me, we'd care. Because too often our eyes are looking at men instead of looking at the Lord, right? It's just like the waves in Matthew chapter 8, 23. They saw the wind and they saw the waves and and they thought, what are we to do? We're going to perish here because they weren't looking at God. If they were looking at God, they could have rested. Verse 29. Then I said unto you, dread not, fear not, neither be afraid of them. Why? Why? Here's the key. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Hey, Pharaoh and his chariots were greater than you too. Hey, you were slaves. They had the weapons. They had the chariots. They had the armor. Yet look what your God did. How soon we forget. This has just been a few days, friend. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bear thee as a man doth bear his son. Oh, think of the tenderness of our Lord. Like a father. Not just sometime, notice, in all the way that you went. Until you came into this place. Until this moment. Until right here in this decision. Verse 32. Yet in this thing... Ye did not 
believe the Lord your God. It's interesting, it always comes back to that, isn't it? We looked at that this morning. Because of unbelief, they were afraid in that storm. Because of unbelief, they feared. Here, they did not believe, so they were afraid. Verse 33. Who, talking about God, went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night to show you by what way you should go, and in a cloud by day? Think of God. They didn't need that. You can get on in the desert for a few days without fire or by night like that. They could get on without a cloud. God was so tender, was thought of everything. You know, like a father. He, he, he had, like a shepherd, would go and pull the poison plants so the sheep, because they're too dumb to figure that out, you know, so they'll, he'll pull them out first before they come that way. Uh, like, like a shepherd who, because the water's going to be too rough, he knows the sheep be too scared to drink, will, will dam up a little place to cause a little pool to the side where the sheep can drink from because it's easier and more convenient for them. Just, just think of our Lord. That's what the Lord's saying. This is what I did for you. Verse 34. And the Lord heard. That's powerful, isn't it? The Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying. I think he not only heard their words, but he heard the tone. Could you imagine speaking about God the way they spoke about him? He hates us. Are you kidding? He hates you. He brought us out here to kill us. What? What? The Lord heard. Verse 35. Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he had trodden upon, and to his children, because... And I want you to get this. Notice the difference. Notice the difference between this verse... In verse 32, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Verse 32, ye did not believe. But verse 36 about Caleb, he believed. He's wholly followed the Lord. Verse 37, also the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, Moses speaking, saying, thou shalt not go in hither. And we all know because the event where he smote the rock twice instead of speaking to the rock. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. I think this phrase is so interesting. Encourage him. Remember he said in the beginning of our reading, he talked about don't be discouraged. And God says, I've raised up another leader named Joshua. Encourage him. We're all apt to get discouraged, aren't we? For he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which said, which ye said should be a prey the giants and so on. And your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither. And unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. And I just thought as I read that, as we think about our Lord and the goodness, there's so much to talk about, and I brought out several things, but the question as far as in our day and us in this hour, Will we believe the Lord, or will we not believe the Lord? Will we wholly follow the Lord as Caleb and possess what God has for us, or will we miss out because of unbelief? And the question I wrote in my Bible here is, will God have to wait another generation? That's what happened. God had a land for them. He had a place for them. He had a plan for them. But because of unbelief, he waited another generation. Check, turn to chapter 2, verse 14, 15. Well, verse 40, let's read that before we turn. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. So instead of going in, he says, that's it for you. I'm going to give it to your children. Notice chapter 2, 14, 15. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea, where they had spied out the land, until we were come over the brook Zered, was thirty and eight years 
until all the generation of the men of war, and this word jumped out at me, were wasted. Wasted out from among the host, as the Lord swore unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the host until they were consumed. The difference between Caleb and the ones that went in and this generation was belief in God. They wouldn't believe the Lord. And as a result, their life was wasted. And the generation of people, the generation of time was wasted. And 40 years by the time it was done, until their life was consumed, until they buried them in the wilderness. And I just think about us, as we stand on the threshold, we've heard even testimony tonight of God at work. And just, well, what God's going to do? What's the next thing as the next foot drops that God's going to begin to do with Gospel at Baptist Church? And, of course, always is the question is, will we have the faith to follow him? Will we believe the Lord? Will we wholly follow the Lord? Or will we say, well, we've, we've, we went further than before, but it's as far as I go. And God have to wait another generation to bless further. You know, it's up to us. The Lord's eyes still are at search <laughs> to and fro throughout the whole land. He's looking for those that he can put his hand on. He's looking for those that he can use. He's looking for those that he can bless. And here was a people that were his people, were his people. Here was people he had a plan for. He has a plan for us. Here was people he was going to do something great with, but it would take faith, and they rebelled. Verse 28, 26. They would not believe. They said, we're, we're not strong enough. They're too great. And God says, no, no, He's, I'm going to fight. <laughs> Moses is saying, verse 30, the Lord your God which goes before you, he shall fight for you. And by the way, if you forget already, according to all that your eyes did see, that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes, you saw his power. You know what he's capable of. It's not on you. Just obey. Just follow him. He's going to bring it to pass. And may God not let us stop short of what he has for us. Will another generation... Will it have to be another generation? Will God have to wait another generation? Or will we say, Lord, as far as you'll take us, we're willing to go. As long as you'll lead us, we'll follow. You direct that step, we'll take it. And let's see what God will do. Just let God have his way. Whatever that is. I'm not predicting, I'm not uh, prophesying of what that is. Only the Lord knows. But I know it's going to be good. It's a good land he's taking us to. I don't know he wants to do things that are beyond our expectation and outside of what we think is in the realm of possibilities because that's how our God operates. That's how he gets the glory. If it's something we could muster, then he wouldn't get the glory. He wants to work supernaturally. He wants to work beyond what is humanly, what we think in the realm of possibilities. And so I just want to encourage you. Don't be those that would be in the group of those that did not believe the Lord. The Lord heard. The Lord knows. Would rather be like Caleb, wholly followed the Lord. Just that's it. Wholly followed the Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer?